Hey guys, real quick before this video starts, want to give a quick shout out to DNT Designs. DNT Designs uh, specializes in eye, eye racing dirt wraps for $10 to $20. Uh, dollars. Does very good work for that money. As you can see, there's a Terry McCarville redo of, I think, 2019. Um, there's my car that was done for the midget and non-wing. Uh, they all look good, all shine, all glow. That was one of my personal favorites right there. Look at the number. Uh, you can get all this for 10 to 20 bucks. Um, some guys charge 60 to 80, and you don't hear back and from them with weeks. And on August 19th, I put in for this one to be done. And on August 20th, I got it back. And under 23 hours, I got my car on the track to look like an absolute badass during the Knoxville Nationals. So, with that all being said, go give this guy a like on Facebook. Go give him your business. If you're into iRacing Dirt, his link will be down in the description. Let's get on to the video. Hello, YouTube. TJP Racing here, and I'm going to give you guys a quick, in-depth tutorial on how to get AI track and open track on your PC and use both of those combined to basically have head tracking for iRacing if you're not a cool kid and don't have VR or have the track IR hat thing, hat clip. Basically turns your webcam into the, the tracking system. So, with that being said, you're going to need a webcam I think really any webcam is going to do uh, for my webcam up front here I've got a Logitech C270 it's my old stream webcam from years ago it's not the best $20 uh, it's mounted right in front of me as you can tell I've got one another one obviously, obviously looking at me that's not the one I use for the, the head eye uh, the head tracking mount it somewhere where it's going to be able to see your full face We'll get into that in a little bit, but first let's get in here and let's get these apps downloaded that we're going to need. First one that we're going to need is going to be Open Track. Links are going to be in the description. Once you click on this page, you're going to scroll down here and you're going to look for the Windows EXE file. Go ahead and download that and run it. And basically just go grab uh, AI Track. Uh, this one was a little bit harder for me to find in here because you have to click on the assets arrow. I scrolled and scrolled and scrolled looking for a download and just kept getting redirected to this and was like, why well, I can't find it. You're going to want the AI track zip file on this one. Uh, once you get your zip file, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click, unzip it, or extract it, sorry. Extract it and it's going to give you a file like this. Go in there, find your AI track application and make a shortcut to it, drag it to your desktop, do whatever you got to do. We've got both the apps we need right now, so let's get in there once I minimize that, and uh, we're going to go over how to set up AI Track and Open Track now. So first things first, when you click on AI Track, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. Uh, yours is going to be a little different on the first initial because I don't think it would even let you start tracking anyway because you don't have a camera fully linked up. Hit Configuration. When you get in here, you're going to have a camera there, more than likely than what I've got. For some reason, mine doesn't show a camera anymore. Uh, my width and my height, I kept the same on default. I changed my FPS to 60, although I'm pretty sure my uh, webcam's only 30. Um, I changed it to 60 anyway, because 60 is better than 30, and I guess I'll just try it. Over here, I kept my distance and FOV the same, or I reverted it back to the same. At first, I started with a different tutorial that was not very uh, good on how to get it to work in iRacing, but it got you through this. Uh, I went to his settings, and uh, my movement was too fast, so I reverted back to normal. Uh, put your model type into fast, and take your landmark stabilization and stuff. Uh, I just left them checked. Click apply, when you can change these on a fly whatever you need to do. This one's, that one's simple. The other one's not hard either, but the other one's more of where the, your, uh, your dead zones are gonna be to your monitor. I'm on a 27 inch monitor, so I really don't have a lot of look left, look right room, but I want to be able to see when a car, I'm, if I'm throwing a nasty slide job out at Eldora in a 410, I wanna know if I'm gonna send him into the, you know, over the fence or if I'm gonna clear him or get that 4X, you know? So, just basically leave that one open. I went ahead and hit you hit start tracking, might as well. And we're going to go over this real quick too, because this is where you have another issue. Obviously, you want to be seen. 
See the Mountain Dew bottle behind me? Uh, this is where your pretty face needs to be seen, and you basically want these pink dots to always be on you, no matter where you look, right? If something gets in the way, if you take a vape hit or whatever and blow smoke, it's going to screw up, and it's going to kind of get all jolty for a second. You just want to make sure that it's always picking up your face. The more lighting, the better. Uh, that's really it on that. Minimize that. As long as you can keep the dots, you're fine. Open up open track and basically keep the same uh, settings that I have here. This one you have to change to UDP over network, I believe. Uh, this one I want to say was already set up that way. Uh, you might have to click on it, but there's a, just a few options there. Filter was the same. Uh, go into your options. Create a center keybind I highly recommend. Uh, whichever you want, and then here's your outputs. I only have left to right. I originally had yaw and pitch, but my pitch was too, uh, the up and down was just too crazy for my liking. I, I just want to look left and right. Uh, you can change all that on a fly too. Once you get all that done, the other two settings, we'll go to the other two pages. Sorry for clicking out on that. They don't matter uh, from, from my preference, per, personal preference, whatever. Um, basically hit okay. We're going to hit start tracking is what I'm going to do here because I'm going to give you an in-depth thrill on it. But I would probably recommend the first time you set it up, go to your mat first. And this is where you basically draw your mat for what where you want your dead zones to be or how fast and how slow you want it to move left and right. Obviously, the faster you move your head and stuff, it's going to move faster anyway. But you got yaw, pitch, roll, X, Y, and Z. The only one I'm worried about is yaw. So what I learned from my setup on a 27-inch monitor with very little move-to-move -move time is I wanted to drag this out and drag it up gradually. And I kind of just put it to where, like, at some point, see, it's never going to get... I'm, I'm all the way... My 90 degrees is all the way over here, right? I can still tune it, but for me, that's right where I need to be on both of them. So this is all going to be based on... What your setup's like and everything um for me that's what works uh you can always come back in here and play around with it uh, my best advice is get on the sim of iRacing or american truck sim this is going to work on pretty much any any game that it has head tracking in it, i'm pretty sure the only two games that i was concerned about it working on was iRacing and um american truck sim and possibly dcs world at some point that'd be really cool too i'm gonna have to test it out but once you get that all set up, open your sim or whatever. We're going to get into how to set that up. But if once you get the, the sim set up and everything, you can probably keep that on and, and tweak this as you go and see where you can what feels comfortable for you. So once that's done, basically hit OK and hit Start Tracking, which for some reason it is not. We're going to hit Stop. We're going to hit Start again, and you're going to see now our octopus moves, right? It, it tells you kind of what you do. Now, it obviously will go up and down wherever your head's moving. Uh, basically, leave both of these open, your AI, AI track and your open track. If you've, they're pretty CPU dependent, but if you got a decent rig, it, it's and you can run eye racing and almost max at 144, I really don't see how you're going to have an issue. You're going to have a little frame rate drop maybe if you don't have a really good system or the best CPU, but you, you'll still be okay. We're going to jump into iRacing here, and I'm going to show you the last few settings here that you're going to need to get this done, and then we are going to call it a day. We're jumping into Port Royal on a 410. It doesn't matter what car you get into. It's just all about getting into the sim. But, uh, yeah, it's a game changer for sure. Uh, like I said, I watched some tutorials, and there's a lot of tutorials out there, but not a lot of them really cover the iRacing people that are like what you're, you and me are Googling for. Some A lot of people have VRs and everything. I, I can't do VR. My motion sickness gets too crazy uh, from the spinning and looking around and stuff. So this is a pretty good alternative for me to have head tracking that officially works. So once you get into the sim, go ahead and hit options. Go to your graphic. And these two do not matter. Your, your border does not matter. Full screen doesn't matter if they're checked on or off. The reason mine are checked on or off is because I use 
uh, custom overlays for when I'm live streaming and for when I am uh, making replays. And uh, basically the only one that you want to have ticked on is enable SPS VR. If you, that's the only one that you need to tick on from this point. These two wouldn't matter if they're ticked on or off. I'm almost sure of it. We'll even try it right now. Go into your test. And there you go. You've got your head movement. Um, that's literally the only option you got to make to your sim once you're in the game is enable SPS VR and, and you're good to go. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was helpful. Like I said, there was a lot of videos out there already, but not a lot of them covered it just for iRacing. I'm sure that you could figure it out from this point, but I read some people's comments and they're like, you, you didn't give in-depth uh tutorial on how to set it up. Everyone's seen how it worked on iRacing, but no one told you how to get it to work. And like I said, the open track and everything is going to be based on your uh, your preferences or your setup. But you just have to play around with it until you get it right. I'm still playing around with mine to get it perfected. Uh, if you guys want a second part of how I got it to work on American Truck Sim, and, or if you want to see a video on if I was able to get it to work on DCS World by chance, uh, just let me know in the comments. But I'm going to try to keep this short and simple. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And this is TJP Racing, and I'll catch you next time.